welcome back to the beating heart of Thailand. We are in the middle of Isan. We're on a road trip. We're trying to get to Kala Sin province. However, we are going to stop off at a few places along the way, including this beautiful bamboo bridge, lots of amazing wildlife, friendly locals as always, and hopefully, fingers crossed, tonight in Kala Sin, a fantastic night market with lots of delicious food. And we're going to be trying Isan food again, and we're going to be really just immersing ourselves here in the beating heart of Thailand, where they grow the rice and have five million buffalo, endless amounts of scenic countryside views and we're gonna soak it in, and we're gonna be positive, we're gonna have a great time. So let's go. <laughs> Before we head over to Kalasin, we're going to cross another province off because there's a very small province in the beating heart here in Isan called Maha Sakhlam. Okay. So I saw a lady grilling these just here at this where I parked Dreamy, right by the bridge. And I think it's just sticky rice barbecued, but it's got an interesting smell. I hope it's not just sticky rice barbecued. I hope maybe she's put cheese on the outside or something. I don't know what it is. But it looks quite nice. Wow. That is... That is disappointing. Oh, I bought two of them as well. Oh, Jesus. It's just sticky rice. But then they've barbecued it. And it's really dry and chewy. Not a good start. <laughs> who put this together probably giving a few bottles of Samsung at the same time as a, as a gift or as a payment and then they kind of just drunkenly put this together apparently it's 60 years old and a kilometer long and it leads to the other side of this lake and the lake is gorgeous actually if I take my sunglasses off yes I can see right down very clear water you can see all the root systems of these massive lily pads and plants and in the distance, very far distance, I see buffalo. So I'm gonna to walk to the other side. Let's carefully walk to the, the other side and get a closer look at the water buffalo. Where are you from? I come from England. Okay. Let me search it for you. Paddy. Paddy. Paddy Doyle. Oh. Whoa. Hmm? <laughs> Thai people always say Paddy Doyle. <laughs> I think I should change my name to Paddy Doyle. Paddy Doyle, okay? Nice to meet you. Do you come from uh, Maha Sakram? Yeah, Maha Salakam. My, Salakam, my. sorry. Yeah, so tall. Me, Maha Salakam. My, where are you from? This has caused an argument. You come from Yasathon? Yeah. yeah. I will go. No, I've been there already. Today I'm going to Kalasin. Kalasin. Yeah, so tall. Have a Kangkuk. Tayana. I'm Kao Jai. Op, op. Op, op. Big. Big snack or big talk? 
Oh, there's a big snake. Yes. Where? Payana. Payana, Mueang Thai. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is beautiful, isn't it? Look at this. It feels like you could run down there, but it's not grass. You'd sink straight away. But like I said, I do need to keep my eye on the footing. And let's just keep going and let's wait until we see, get a bit closer to these beautiful buffalo. That's the end of the first part of the bridge. The second part isn't very long at all. But look, down there, the buffalo. <laughs> and um, they were sitting lovely, just chilling in the sun. But they've gotten up now and they're walking around. I kind of want to get a closer look. It's funny, you know, because in the south of Thailand, it's quite rare and special to see buffalo. And the best encounter I had was in Patalung, in Talay Noi the giant lotus flower lake because they live wild there and you see them swimming and that's when you realize they are water buffalo for a reason they're extremely aquatic animals incredible things but coming to Isan <laughs> I've learned that there are five million buffalo in Thailand and they're pretty much all here every field seems to have a buffalo or a cow here in Isan so that's quite nice. It's like you're on a constant safari. I wish I had like a carrot. Lovely. It's definitely a mum and a dad and the two little kids. And, uh... Stop right there, criminal scum! Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Then pay with your blood! <laughs> are they charging? Is this an aggressive behavior? Or are they like saying, hey, where's the carrot? I just don't want to be that YouTuber, you know? Today, Paddy Doyle was murdered by a buffalo when he was out there filming them. And he deserved it because he's an idiot. Nobody breaks the law on my watch. I'm confiscating your stolen goods. Now pay your fine or it's off to jail. So that was a lovely little stop off here in Mahasakram province. You get some interesting names of provinces in this part of Thailand. And you know, like where we're going next, Kalasin. Doesn't really sound like a Thai province, does it? Kalasin, Mahasakram. Almost Arab, isn't it? Isn't it? Mahasakram, ah, Kalasin. This is a small little town in a small province which is just vast farmland. Beautiful nonetheless, but you know, not a whole lot going on. Certainly don't need to stay here overnight. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll just continue on. It's about another 150 clicks, or an eternity on my Honda Dream, <laughs> to Kalasin. We'll find a hotel, we'll uh, soak up some of the vibes there, see what's going on, and then in the evening, it's supposed to be a really nice night market, so I'm excited. I haven't filmed a night market in ages, so I hope you're ready. Okay, so before we arrive into the town of Kalasin itself, about 35 kilometers outside, randomly, is apparently a world-class dinosaur museum 
and it's apparently not to be missed, full of education and interesting facts about dinosaurs. Because this area of Thailand, I've been seeing, you know, dinosaur parks and just statues of dinosaurs like this, like this T-Rex here and everything, all over the place. And that's because fossils of dinosaurs are very popular and numerous in this part of the world. They keep finding dinosaurs all the time. It's really busy because it's Father's Day today. Lots of kids with their families. Let's go in, let's see what it's like. Yeah, it's busy. Very busy, actually, which is nice. It's got a good atmosphere. So one thing to note, the two-tier pricing system is strong here, okay? If you don't know what that means, it's 100 baht if you're foreign but it's only 40 baht if you're Thai, which I normally don't mind. However, I've been here 20 minutes walking around and it is nice, but not everything is translated into English. Quite a lot of it is just in Thai. So if you're gonna charge us extra, you could at least translate it all in English so we can understand what's, what we're looking at. And the first part was interesting. We got to see how the Earth's crust was made and then we sort of started to see information on the first organisms to live on Earth and then the first fossilized finds, you know, way back, way back before the dinosaurs. And now we're here at the section where we're learning about how many species of dinosaurs actually lived in this particular area of Thailand, which is something that I didn't know. I didn't know this many species of dinosaurs lived in this particular area of Thailand way back when, you know? which is that's that's interesting this is cool this is a hologram exhibit so they're using holographic technology which I've never seen before but it's all in Thai so I don't know what she's saying here is the T-Rex it's massive absolutely huge and they're always fighting Triceratops, aren't they? Even from the earliest movies into modern day museums, they're always these two. Was that a thing or is that just Hollywood? So I just learned how the hologram technology works. <laughs> it's quite basic actually. They just have a, a flat screen plasma TV and a reflective surface. And it just, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was all fancy, but it's just a telly. They do have a very impressive selection of skeletons. There's, there's a lot. And then when they have the real fossils, because, you know, these are just replicas, obviously. Uh, but they do have a lot of the real fossils, even fossilized plants and dinosaur eggs and obviously bones. And even this one's really cool. You can see the skin, the fossilized reptile skin of a small lizard that lived 63 million years ago. I've never seen that before. That's really cool. But you know, there's a lot of information here and it's all unfortunately in Thai, which I know we're in Thailand, but you know, double the price. This is cool. These are all real dinosaur footprints from a nearby national park and you can see the actual way that they found them here and then they've cut them out and they've stuck them on the wall and I, they are real i've touched them so that's very cool real dinosaur footprints in the national park here in thailand okay so then they finished with this story of the extinction and then the evolution of mammals and humans which was quite nice and then you know typical gift shop ending I have to say I am impressed okay you have to pay double if you're a foreigner and not everything is in English but that's okay if you've got kids they'll love it and it, I'm just still surprised that 35 kilometers outside of Kalasin downtown in the middle of nowhere basically is this very very professional and very large museum so that's a surprise and I did learn quite a bit in there which is useful so and if, you, if you've got kids they'll absolutely love it 
But now we're going to head back into Kalasin. There is a really beautiful mountain overlooking this uh, museum and it has a temple on the top and it looks beautiful. However, I'm kind of injured at the minute. I've hurt my back. One of my muscles is in spasm and it's really quite painful. I don't know what happened. Just woke up like this. So I'm not really climbing any mountains for the next few days. So let's just head into Kalasin. Another hour drive. <laughs> and then we'll go chill and explore some more. It's late afternoon now. I just love that sound. <laughs> Ice cream man in Thailand. Yeah, I did my usual. You know, I checked in. I found a, a 500 bar a night guest house. You know, this is the thing about Thailand. I've said this a million times, but you don't really, especially in the provinces, you don't need to book ahead. And then you just drive in and you find a hotel that's in the nearest to the middle of everything. 500 baht every time, sometimes 600, sometimes 700, if it's really fancy. And then, you know, just did my usual. Had some 7-Eleven lunch, started editing the previous video, and chilled out for a few hours. And Dreamy was leaking like a dream, like she always is. <laughs> but to be honest, that's a good thing, because at least I know there's oil in the engine. And I've done my, let's go for a walk and explore in the afternoon which is such a good thing to do. You just find so many cool things. I've just found this lake and it seems to be the default setting for Isan. Nothing forever, then a town in the middle of the province, a couple of temples, a 7-Eleven, a market, and some form of lake that Thai people walk and exercise around. And this person here, a very lucky person, has a boat. I wonder if that is a privately owned vessel or maybe the council use it for special events. Looks like there's some leftover Loi Kutongs in there. And the, the night market where we'll go for dinner, which is highly recommended actually, is only another three, four kilometer walk. <laughs> I walked to the night market and it was packed and then I came to this night market which is the famous one or the one that I was recommended and it was really quiet when I got here maybe it was too early so I jumped into this place called Amuse Cafe and it's really good it's got really good you know uh, craft beer selection and foreign beer selection and it has like a French Thai cuisine fusion food menu and I ordered a bunch of food. I had, <laughs> I had some crispy pork, and then I had some beef, French beef with like fish sauce. It was okay. Um, and then I had a food that is very unknown in Thailand. You might not have heard of it. It's called cheesy chips, <laughs> um, and they were delicious. And but the thing is, they had a special on the draft beer. They had German draft beer on buy two get one free so I had three pints and I was gonna film inside but it's really loud they're blasting black pink and k-pop so I couldn't really film and talk in there and the food was okay 
And to be honest, I just like sat there and watched like YouTube videos on my phone and just relaxed. And Kalasin's cool, you know, I like this place. It's a small town in a, in a, in a, in a, in a Nissan province surrounded by rice fields as usual. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'm excited. For the first time in a long time, I'm really excited to get to somewhere. It's called Con Ken. Con Ken. Con Ken. It's a massive city, I think. I think it's the biggest city in Isan. And I'm meeting up with some subscribers tomorrow for an Indian curry. And then I'll explore. And there's hopefully some really cool things to see and do in that city. And then a really big surprise in Buriram province, but that's that's in the future. Anyway, Kalasin and Maha Sakram. It's been a pleasure. And uh, I'm going to go back to my hotel. 25, 30 minute walk and I'm quite drunk and I have 0% battery, so I don't even know how to get home. <laughs> and there's no taxis here. There's no grab. This is Isan. It's fend for yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. And um, yeah, see you in Konken.